indeed this is yet another episode of inside the newsroom where we are seeking to celebrate the legacy of our journalism and in this particular episode i'm more than excited to be hosting my friend and former colleague seth olale now perhaps uh, the story with the most views on this continent has been produced by this man and some of us cannot hear the end of it rustler's paradise was quite a story and with uh, over 20 million views on youtube seth olale says that that is his biggest story but that is his story in the newsroom he has a bigger story outside the newsroom and that is why we have him on set today to just discuss a couple of things about his journey in the media and outside the media kaka seth olale welcome to the show Thank you, Pran. Na leo ni kama you are very humble, man. Sika wa idea ko. You know, uh, sitting on this other side yeah. of the set, lazima tunenyeke kidogo. Karibu kusema. Thank you for that question. I hate that thing. Why do people do that? Unaenda kufanya interview, unauliza mtu swali anakwambia, "Thank you for that question." Mm. It's, a, it's a standard operating procedure. Uh, and especially scholars. Scholars. Scholars okay, when you are interviewing a professor, yes. a lecturer, lazima utakwambia, "Thank you for that question." <laughs> Ama that's a very important that's question. That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Karibu yes. wana. Asante. So we began this show. Mm. I just keep making some small brief here and there. We began this show so that we can celebrate our the work that we do in the media and I, by now you know that uh, very little is told about journalists in this country it has always been their work to tell other people's stories so i thought in the meantime why not try come up with something that would help the public out there mm -hmm. to understand the life of storytellers in the country with time we can proceed to authors and what have you i don't know what to think about the entire idea no uh, it's a good gesture because mm. uh many a times we tell our stories way later mm. in form of an autography mm. uh and about, uh, what is it uh in, in form of you know uh writing a book Mm. autobiography is it no mnatanga memoir memoir si <laughs> 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 i thought it's memoirs <laughs> so so uh, yeah. most of the time you you find uh, many 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 of us who've uh, been in this game mm. we will tell our stories way after retirement yeah? mm. so i think this is a unique or as a eulogy uh, yes as a eulogy exactly mm. Yeah. Yeah, so I thought about it and all that and thank you for coming on the show bar. Mm -hmm. So maybe the most important place to start would be how how did you begin this journey in the in, in the media? I, I didn't want to ask you the direct question of who is Seth Olale, you know. Yeah, how did you begin this entire journey in the media? My journey began in 2011 when uh, I was where then at Adia Mm. at uh, Dexter University uh, we were always pursuing um, a degree in uh, communication mm. which has journalism as public relations and so you know when you know your third year now reality starts setting in you need those internships mm. you need those um, attachments and all that yeah to to also boost your coursework so I did some application. I I I I I I applied for internship. Mm. All media houses, all of them, literally, <laughs> including radio stations. Yeah, mm. uh, that journey began in June, and so the first people to respond were Hope FM. Mm. Yeah, the, that is Sita. Mm. I trust is the answer. Ministries. Yeah, mm. so. <laughs> That is when I went and um, for an interview because mm. they asked me, so you want an internship, so what have you learned? I, I said that I'm, I'm pursuing a, a course in journalism. Mm. Well, uh, getting, uh, so this is what is called a radio studio mm. and this is the recording booth. Mm. 
So there's some gadgets there where you have to set, and so you start recording. So <laughs> I'm not familiarized yeah. with that. <laughs> with, <laughs> because I had to, that one came later when we were doing the project in mm. fourth year. So <laughs> when, when I was still okay, <laughs> so I was going to produce an entire radio bulletin. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I come with a script. Mm. I record. I set the <laughs> recorders. Yes. I take. I do my video. I come out and then now I edit, edit and I package for a, a, a story. Yeah. Um, I froze. Hope FM. I hope FM. I just froze and that, uh, <laughs> the lady there just said, okay, <laughs> just come out. It's okay. okay. <laughs> just come out. Watch it on I. Watch it on I. Mm. Then I went to the now interviewing panel. Yes. And now they told me, why are you interested? Mm. Then I told them, I, I, I want to be a journalist. Yeah. And then they told me now, assuming uh, it was just part of the interview, mm. assuming so, uh, uh, where do you want to be? I said, I'm really a sports enthusiast. Mm. And um, by virtue, other than playing rugby in, 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 in the university, mm. I was also the sports secretary, uh, sports leader. Mm. I was also a student leader in charge of sports and recreation mm. for two terms. Why was I sorry? Mimi, yes. Yeah. So uh, sports was my thing. Mm. And so they asked me, so you want to be a sports journalist? I said, yes. Mm. And so they told me, assuming, well, what, is your, the, what is your team in the English Premier League? Mm. Which team do you support? I said I support Arsenal. Mm. And so they told me, if, assuming you've gotten a ticket, a complimentary, Arsenal has sent you a complimentary ticket to go and watch, and you're supposed to be on duty. Mm. What will you do? Mm. I said, we are a team. I'll have my colleagues. So what I'll do, mm. I will go and watch Arsenal play, yeah. but I will do a local arrangement yeah. so that a colleague can step in for me. Mm. I can even apply, leave, mm. you know, go watch Arsenal and come back. Yeah. And then everyone just laughed. Yeah. In that panel. So later on, uh, I got a regret. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I response that uh, we are sorry we didn't take you. But I, I, I got information that you know, uh, I blundered mm. when I when I said that. Mm. But on I thought I was just being honest. <laughs> that, <laughs> that you see, you see because oh, we are, you know we are. We are we are organic. We are real people. We are, are not plastic, mm -hmm. and I'm uh, and, and, and I'm sure we have leave days. We have off days in our yeah. in our work. People apply for leave or get people get off days to go attend to various issues. Mm -hmm. Some uh, some people are doing projects. Mm -hmm. Some people travel on leave. You know. Yeah. So uh, you know, I was just being honest, but unfortunately, the so interviewing cool. panel at Hope FM. Mm -hmm. Uh, saying we're gonna uh, uh, fast forward mm. in September, I was called by National Media Group, mm. and you know I had I had applied all those application various media houses like all of them in June. In June, mm. so June, July, August, September. When now I'm even now coming back now to, to school to school, mm. then um, I receive a call from uh, the HR that come for a test. Mm. So we were 30. 30 people? Yeah, we are 30. It's called an acclimatizer. Acclimat acc there's a test they do, yeah? Mm. Mm. So that's, it's just the first mchujo. Mm. <laughs> it's the first disqualification test, yeah? Because yeah? it's a speed test. Mm. It's written, so you, we are like 30. So 30, we are taken to our room. And then now you are told, attempt all questions. Mm. Attempt, all questions. not get it right. Yeah. <laughs> Attempt all <laughs> questions. <laughs> so, and then they set the timer. Yeah. Sha, sha, sha. There are a lot of questions. And so I knew it was a speed test. And so I did very fast. We were taking three of us. Mm. Out of 30, mm. only three. And this was internship. Who yeah? are this? It was me, yeah. Simon Kigamba, mm. who is now my editor at Citizen TV. Yeah. Swahili editor yeah. and Lois Wanjira. That's one. Lois, Lois, Lois. Not, not Rose Wangoi. 
Lois, yeah. NMG, Eldoret, was in Gisho. She's also called Wangoyama, you told me Lois Wangoy. Yes. Yeah, but that's, that, yes, that's yes. Her, her name, right? Yeah, that's her name, Lois okay. Wangoy, yeah. Mm. So, Lois, mm. Kigamba and me, only three. Out of that. Out of that. The best of the, eh? <laughs> the best ahead of the rest. Yeah, so we were talking in, and you know, I, I remember the then uh, Richard Chacha was the assignment mm. editor. Mm -hmm. So when I, I was told to, no, there was also another interview, by the way, after that. Now I'm very serious. I was back to the interviewing panel, mm. and this time I was ready. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fumble. Yeah. So what happened is, so we went there, we were, we were, three from interns and then there were two some two journalists that came from KBC mm. now them I think they were just seeking our job 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 mm. yeah the, maybe there was a there was a position for a mm. reporter so we went to the interview we were five but they only took three of us the mm. three interns mm. and so I remember Richard Church on the day of reporting that was on 12th September mm. On the day of reporting, um, she asked me, so where do you want to be? We have a sports desk, we have a business desk, we have a news desk. So where do you want to, to you know, get your experience? Mm. I said sports. Mm. And so that is how I, I joined the NMG family. Mm. As a sports intern, mm. my contract ended three months, uh, sometimes in December. Then I requested. I requested for an extension because mm. uh, of the love of it. Mm. I, I really had passion. I still have. Mm. I have passion for what I do. Mm. So, you know, when we were told it's a wrap, I requested, oh, please, I, 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 can, I, can I just continue? Mm. Then I was told, no, 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 you see lots come, so we we'll need to take another lot. So me, I, 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 I kept on going to work mm. without a, a badge. Yeah, so I kept on going to work. Umatolewa group. So internet ako kwa group ya WhatsApp. Yeah, so na kujia pale mbele pale wale masoja pe nilikuwa nimefanya some peer na nizoea pale kwa gate. Wana kujua. Wana nijua, but I kandarasi ilisha. So I we just walking. So after a month, uh, I was surprised. I was given a letter that. You know, uh, our internship is being extended. My oh. internship is being extended. Mm. And so um, it got quite extended. Then it was extended again in Feb for now the final three months. Mm. And then um, by God's grace, I, they gave me a contract. They say, Badeo Najituma, mm. and you are hard working. And so at that particular time, I, 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 I really, you know, um, had a good spell also because uh, I, 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 I learned a very fast and I executed my job mm. and they liked what I did and so they gave me a, a, a long contract. Mm. So I, I juggled in between now going to school in the evening and now... Um, At the river? No, Nairobi campus. Uh, how about you? I uh, only look at Wapa. Mm. Valley Road, you know, Valley Road campus. Valley Road campus. Yes. So you tembe hivi, you hivi. Natembea beki wa kupanda na kushuka. <laughs> so and that is how now we I I I I I started my journalism career mm. until 2018 mm. when I was sent to go and do and cover uh, uh, presidential uh, to cover election the general election just like any other newsroom you know, during election 2017. Yeah yeah. Now you see during election you all collapse. Deaths, you collapse all departments and mm. everyone now becomes a political mm, <laughs> reporter in the field. Mm. And so that is how I went out. So uh, where I, I did that and you know when I came back, mm. the results and everything. So later on my, you know, uh, my, my bosses say, you did a good job. Mm. And uh, by the way, uh, well, do you, would you mind coming on this other side? Mm. In fact, I was not told, <laughs> would you come? Mm. I did news i switched into the newsroom mm. immediately after that election because now they started giving me stories for main news so i started doing follow-ups was going to court mm. presidential petition mm -hmm. so just like that i 
I, I now found myself now in the newsroom. Now, there was a time now for decision making that came mm -hmm. because now I had now to decide, you know, now what's happening, by the way. And I, I said, by the way, uh, I think for the many years, six plus, I've been at uh, the sports desk. Uh, you know, why not venture into, uh, into now real news and uh, current affairs? And I said, I, I think I'm ready. I'm ready mm. to, I, I have what it takes and uh, I can do it. Ukanza you mambo ya pandits argue. Nikanza. So Nikanza na pandits argue to figure she will. say. Yes. Political analysts. Those are con men. Yeah, so that is how we, I moved on. Mm. Mm. So how then did it get to you now becoming an investigative journalist at the same NMG? Mm -hmm. So at NMG, I, to date, mm. to date, uh, investigative journalism is my passion, mm. very much. And uh, when uh, I, 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 I wanted, because when, after covering politics, politics and all that during the election and now I, I, I realized that I'm now inclining into a political reporter but I also had passion in doing investigative so I, I approached some you know figures there who you know were very good at it I, I went personally to you know two people who had joined the, the team mm -hmm. uh, Dennis Okari also went to Alanamu and I told them you know uh, I love this thing. I admire you guys, what you do. And, you know, uh, I watch a lot of this also, apart from, you know, local television and all that. So, um, I'm, yeah, they, they inspired me and they told me, you know, this, you can do it. These are the do's and don't. Mm. It's a very uh, murky field, very risky as well. But, you know, uh, if, if you believe you, you, you have what it takes and you have the passion, you can do it. So uh, that is how, you know, now I started doing some bit of uh, investigative uh, pieces. Hapanapale. Hapanapale. Ah, mm -hmm. I see. So then now we go to you going to cover the sort of Rustler's Paradise. How did you get that idea? Maybe? The idea of Rustler's Paradise, um, we sat down. By me saying me, uh, we, it was me, and uh, that time there was some sort of convergence mm. that had just started. So uh, when I had this, we had this idea about, you know, the last, last part of us, how are you going to do a more comprehensive piece? Mm. So we went and sat down as a team um, with uh, my colleagues from the Daily Nation then, the likes of Vincent Achuka. And so we decided that uh, stories have been told about banditry, mm. uh, time immemorial, mm. but, but a solution has not been found. And we've never done a very comprehensive story on the course. Mm. Yeah? Most of the time we do, we highlight the operations, mm. the aftermath. Mm. That is what we do and it ends. But, but what is fueling this? So we came and realized it's, it's very comprehensive in the sense that um, first we need to go to all the North Rift counties. Mm. So we came up with a plan that we're going to go to six counties, mm. uh, five in North Rift, one in Northern Kenya. Mm. And then we came up with a very comprehensive schedule. Mm. We came up with uh, what we call the informers mm. we we included also people who are going to the security who are going to take us through because you know we were in the jungle for 14 days mm. <laughs> we were 14 days you are on your own mm. and so we we decided that you know we th we thought that the idea about cattle wrestling has not been addressed and then now of course we also got some insight and also some tip of you know from the raiders themselves, mm. you know, who we, we, we featured some of them, the reformed ones as well, and who told us, you know, we are paid a lot of money to go and do these operations. It is not longer, it is not 
about uh, traditional practice. This is a commercial, this is mm. a multi-billion mm. enterprise. Yeah, enterprise. Mm. And so when you watch, when you watch uh, Rustler's Paradise, mm. um, which you rightly say has attracted over 20 view, million viewers, mm. you'd, you'd see even how risky we did, uh, the kind of risk. Who are members you know? of this team at the time? And I, and, I, and I know you guys just thought it was a story like any other, right? Mm. It was just another special report. You've gone out of the field. So who are members of, uh, of, of this team, maybe? Because I saw the pictures were very crisp, the, mm. the production itself and everything. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we, 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 we had, um, we had, a, we had a, my, camera, my cameraman was Eric Okot. Mm. Yeah, we had Eric Okot, uh, who is now Emeritus. <laughs> Emeritus Eric Okot, yeah. cameraman yeah. at NMG. Then, then we had a very, 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 very courageous uh, logistics mm. operator mm. and driver called uh, Mbao. Mbao. Yes. Then we also have, we call him Woodwork, mm. Samuel Mbao. Mm. We, we had Vincent Achuka. Yeah. We had uh, this one, Nani, this one. They were they were Gesese, Gesese. Gisesa, Gisesa, Nambega. Eh. Yes, Nambega was one of uh, mm. the team leaders. <laughs> yeah. So we had, a, so it was the three reporting angle was me, mm. Vincent Achuka, and Nambega Gisesa. Gisesa. Yeah. And then now you, the logistics, the photographer was one Cheboite. Mm. Cheboite is, comes from all the way in Baringo. Mm. And uh, at that particular moment, he was a photographer based there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were using also the, the guys on the ground mm -hmm. who knew the terrain. Mm -hmm. And also, we, so it was, we, we went, that was a team. So it was me, Achuka, mm -hmm. Nambaga, you call him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guesses. You're making me doubt his name. Gisesa. 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 Then with Cheboite, Eric Okoth, and Samuel Mbao. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, that was a mm. that that was a powerful production. Mm. Even from uh, the team members mm. there, yourself, yeah. uh, uh, Achuka and Gisesa are, mm. are quite very dangerous. risky. Uh, we've never done something like that. I've never gone to buy ammunition, mm. <laughs> and you know you're posing, you're posing as you're posing as dealers, mm. and you know you're 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 talking to people who uh, are really armed, mm. you know, and just one conviction mm. <laughs> from one of them. Or if just something, and you know we're doing that, and someone is filming in the car, mm. <laughs> in the tinted car. Yeah. So just what? Yeah, it, it 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 was really it was really 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 tough then. For Kaivi Aseme, we are still going to elections. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Would you say that was the riskiest assignment yet, or was it the the, the Somalia assignment? Um, what would be the difference between those assignments? The, the Somalia assignments are not much. It is risky as well, vulnerable. But mm. you see, like that one, mm. you're really on your own. Mm. You know, when we go for these embeds mm. uh, by, by the military or the police, mm. uh, you know, uh, in as much as you're going into enemy territory, mm. there's some sort of comfort that, you know, there is some security mm. with you you know mm -hmm. uh but you know this one you're on the field on your own i've life-threatening expeditions were two mm -hmm. that one but the, the the one that was so close was when i did the mercury sugar mm -hmm. investigative piece mm -hmm. when i did the mercury sugar investigative piece in mombasa mm -hmm. so we went to these go downs the cfss that were repackaging mm -hmm. you know expired contaminated stuff and they were being investigated and now you you pose yourself as someone who's come to look for work mm. doing those go downs mm. and then someone else you've biked someone and you've, you've given them a recorder mm. yeah mm. and then when we mission accomplished we are leaving the scene mm. at, we are really speeding in those cold days you know those roads, Ugo mm. CFS, they have uh, no network. Mm. It's dark. Uh, there's no street lights and all that. So at night, so you are you are really hurting. You are leaving the scene. Then all of a sudden, 
<laughs> you intercepted mm. by a double cabin comes mm. in front of you mm. movie style mm. <laughs> and then heavily armed mm. people in uniform mm. people in civilian mm. heavily armed and they don't look as if they are from the normal mm. uh, you know locals you see there mm. yeah then you're being told everyone leave the car and lie down mm. Everyone leave the car and lie down. Lie down. Yeah. Heavily, um, AK-47s, all of them, they were for AK-47s. Mm. And so we lie down. Mm. And then you're being asked, Muna kanyagu hivyo mgongo, muna ulezwa, nini kina nani? Nani muatuma? Mbisifikia tuwajui, tumewaona, tumuafatilia. Boss. <laughs> and then, I remove my badge. I remove, say this is women on nation media. So they start arguing. Mm. And then they start making calls and they call people. Mm. And someone tells them, I'm a summon it one an with with that coastal language. Mm. And then uh, so and it was settled. Nation media group. Mm. Goja to Kidogo. Mm. I don't know who they call. At nation. I, I don't know who they, they call. They are contact. <laughs> they call their <laughs> contact. <laughs> And then after they call, then uh, they're told, but they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seth Olale is indeed a journalist at mm. Nation Media Group. Mm. Basically, at Wapa Mombasa, Apana, Uyo Nwa Nairobi. Yes. Ampani ni hapa? Yeah, anafani ni hapa. Waku hapa, waku na gari gani, nani mwingine. Mm. So we're being told to identify ourselves. All of us, we produce our, our job, our, our, our work. Nini. And all that time, ume, ume kanagwa mgongo yeah. with guns pointed at you. You were with who at this time? This time I was with... Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that be that operation. This time I was with... <laughs> well, yeah, Basuet. I was with Paul Basuet. Paul Basuet. And I was with Paul the driver. Mm. <laughs> Two Pauls, mm. Paul Basuet, and there was also another Paul ba the driver. Mm. Yeah, and so after so much phone calls, we, we are let to go. Mm. Yes. What was their beef with you guys? Their beef, they 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 they, they, they thought we are spying. Mm. Yes, they they said we are spying and we are up to something because they searched the car, mm. and they told us if we are armed, we surrender. Mm. And then you see, them they don't want to identify themselves because we ask, who are you? Our oh, same. Mm. Mm. And they are very aggressive and want to engage. Mm. You see, so we, you don't ask many questions. Mm. So you just obey your orders. So you, they tell us. And of course, uh, from what you say, it doesn't look like they, they worked for the government. You could not tell. The car, was un, the car didn't have registration plate, mm. or maybe we didn't see. Mm. Yeah? Because you see, after we did that, now they escorted us out. Mm. of that territory. Mm. Yeah? And they told us, you guys just leave. Mm. We come to Jipenda and then it. Mm. Yeah. So I think those those two, that, that was the closest. That one did I you ever get to danger. do the story? Yes, I did. Mm. I did the story. Mm. Yes. What was the reaction? And we highlighted, we highlighted that. Mm. That was one. Number two was also, this Nini has a lot of dangers, this uh, restless paradise, because I remember we, we got a tip that, you know, so we went somewhere and where now they were loading the the loot into trucks yeah now they were being transferred all the way mm. yeah to some slaughterhouses so we follow that canter mm. where hey <laughs> then when you follow you follow now it leaves the highway now we start to mezima mata now to kombali now we are following we are following the red lights mm. and then it stops and then two men come out so you know it's dark you cannot wash her so they come out they open the doors mm. and they go behind the doors mm. did a u-turn and we sped off because mm. <laughs> 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 yeah, i'm sure it was a trap because they they knew we were following them mm. at some point mm. then and then they stopped mm. Then wakashuka. Mm. Na wakafungua mlango. Buya, you are investigative. What is that? Mm. Yeah, what is that? Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, when when you open the door and you go behind the door. Behind the door. Yeah, that's a buffer zone. Now mm. they are ready to engage. Mm. Yeah. So mm. we I think those are two very mm. close close calls. Mm. Mm. I'm coming back, I'm coming back to that conversation on the newsrooms and all that. Yeah. I read somewhere that you you you, you once ran away from home one. What was that about? <laughs> In class six, I went to a school called Olympic Primary School. Olympic. Olympic Primary School is in Kibera, Kibra. Mm. Then in 1997, mm. Olympic Primary School was the number one primary school in Kenya. In Kenya. Yeah, it used to top. Mm -hmm. The then uh, Mrs. Nganga mm. was the <laughs> headmistress. Mm. Then you had Mrs. Namulundu mm. was the deputy who let her. Mm. Now, that excellence mm. did not just come mm. <laughs> on a silver platter. Mm. There was serious caning mm. and discipline. <laughs> there was something anyone who went through Olympic primary school. It was a public school, yeah. Olympic. Yes. Everyone who went through Olympic primary school will tell you of what- It's still there. It's still there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Of what used to be called slabs. Mm. Slab is where it was an assembly area mm. and it was literally the concrete slabs. Mm. So this is what used to happen. Mm. If your class fails or drop marks, how it used to be Kitambo, mm. You're going, you are, your class is taken to the slabs and all the teachers in the staff room mm. are come out to beat you. Mm. If your class is making noise mm. and it is deemed to be indiscipline, mm. you go to the slums, Munalela Chini, and all the teachers on Achikua Viboko pipes, Zile mm. gas, Zile yeah. green. Mm. Eh? You are beaten by all the teachers. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there was a day, yeah. you know, I don't know why this teacher yeah. <laughs> at Class 6 East yeah. was just on my case yeah. every day. Uh, I learned to get pigwa. So I jumped. Mm. So those windows were very big windows. Yeah? Mm. So you, you just open, you jump, and you run. Mm. So that is how I left Olympic Primary School. It was on, a, on an afternoon, weekday. Mm. So this teacher called me, said, you know, saying, uh, you know, did you do this? So I, I said it was too much. And then, you know, I jumped the window mm. and I went. So when I went home, I knew that at home, mm. Akukalik, yeah. <laughs> my father, <Yeah. laughs> my father, umetoka shule. Umetoka. Umetoka shule. So what did Sato Lale decide? Mm. Street life, bro. Oh, really? Yeah, so I went to the streets. Because yeah. I'm going to the streets, I want to be a chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so I went, so I I went, I put on my good shoes. So you see, that is, I, I left at 3.30. Yes. So I went home, I, so mom was not at home, dad was not, it was only the house help. Yeah. So I put on home clothes. Mm. So the house of said, why are you home? Yeah. Said we've been released early. Yeah. So Nikava Vizuri, my jacket, mm. walk mm. from Kibera, yeah. Ayani, mm. estate, to town. So Nika, I walked to town. So town I started looking, looking at places, things. And I went all the way downtown to somewhere called Jack and Jill. It used to be a supermarket near OTC. Yeah. I don't know if you know. Where, in Jamaica at some point. In Jamaica, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Apo Karibu na St. Peter's. Yes. yes. Clevers. Yes. There are these buses for going for home before to Kisi. Yeah. The Otange, Otange Express. Express. Kisi Express. So the, that is how I knew because that is where we used to board. Yeah. So when I'm going to home base. So it, I went there straight. Yeah. So I said, this will be the new base. So we, I stayed I, up till the midnight. Buses are going, others are coming. Ile Batidi Nanjail in a pig at town. For how long? Four days. Four days. After the fourth day or the fifth day, I <laughs> marched home. <laughs> Do, 
because na survive aje yeah. zile ndizi matoke yeah. you know now the key the, the buses from kisi will come with matoke yes so zikibebwa yeah. during that particular nini zingine zinaanguka yeah. so zikianguka hiyo ndinachukua <laughs> na weka na nakula <laughs> that was breakfast supper and dinner i never went anywhere else i never took a glue yeah and i never joined those groups of street boys but i was just there was my base yeah. so siku ni mimi hapo na masoja tunaota moto and what what and is that. your story what are you telling them because they are basically they basically want to know what is this young man doing here what are you telling them why are you here yeah 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 they ask me why why are you here and yeah. wewe vile tunakuona wewe yeah. si chokola yeah. so ume uletwa na basi what happened ama what happened I said me I'm, I'm a street boy. Yeah. Me I'm a street boy. I've been here for long enough. Yeah, ni got no job, I'm a street boy. Kwa sababu bali wewe ni msafi bana. Yeah. Sema no no I'm a street boy. Yeah, tuko kwa hii town. Yeah, so I was a street boy for 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 four days. That is back in 19 in CBD 1997. 1997. Yes. What really informed that decision? I'm trying to see what really informed that decision kwamba sasa mimi nimeenda. Let me go stay out there. I, I, because I, I knew mm. number one, I didn't, I didn't like school. Mm. Somehow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. lower primary, I didn't, I didn't like school. Mm. So, because I was very happy, but that was very rarely when you know uh, we are being told by those who have not come with this. I don't know five bob for the painting. What what? Go home. Go home. I used to rejoice. Yeah. I used to I you, when exams were over that was the best time for me. We used to go and play yeah. in the in, in the school chambers get those potatoes mm. to nene the sweet potatoes tunatoi voro tunakula. So that those was those the things that really you know made me happy. Mm. So when this caning came at a said Why why am I suffering going to school? Mm. Why am I going first of all I'm going to school somewhere I don't want. Yes. And then when I go there I'm being beaten. So why? I said I don't want to go to school. Yeah. And when you don't go to school you cannot step in Moses Onyango Olale's house. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be slaughtered. <laughs> so I said the streets mm. is the only way that you can can do. Yes yes yes. Ah. <laughs> Yes, I see, yes. I see. I see. Mm, mm, so did you always wanted mm, to become a journalist mm, or then mm, why at what point then did you realize that uh, becoming a journalist is what you want to do? When um, from class 4 mm. and this is this was my journey mm. uh, at class 4 when um, I got a book I went and borrowed a book because I didn't have that textbook. I think it, it, was, it used to be called Learning English. Mm. So when I didn't have learning, there was Learning English and then there was Standard English. Mm. So Learning English, I went to borrow. So when I borrowed, I started reading the like the compo. It was like a story book, mm. yeah. Mm. So when I read, I started memorizing like what I read. So when my, when my sister came, I remember, I, I started narrating to her. My elder sister mm. what had read in that particular book like you know giving a story mm. Mm. and so i did i did i did and then my dad was like passing by or had and then my, you know my dad rebuked me and said that is terrible english yes. you know i'm speaking from a point i went to the duke of york uh. do you know what was the duke of york mm -hmm. the present lenana school. lenana school so lenana school when my dad went there as the only the in his class he was the only african mm. in his class so it used to be called the duke of york mm. so my dad would you know how i went to a lenana boys nowadays you know wants to portray themselves or even the guys who say i went to alliance the famous more, more, yes. i went to alliance i went to alliance so the people went to lenana like my dad when he had me reading he was so frustrated and you know he told me you know you have a very poor english mm. this english you know this terrible can you terrible go and english. go and improve your you know your your english skills and you know i got demoralized 
the dog. Uh, but I, I, I was so determined. And, and I think uh, that is where my storytelling mm. was born. Uh, because now later on, um, after campus, or during campus, or even selecting a course to go and join campus, uh, my mind was already, you know, uh, made up that um, I want, I want to pursue journalism. But also one person who inspired me was also my cousin, uh, Dan Odiambo Olale, who was, um, who for a very long time was also head of bureau at uh, Kisumu Daily Nation. Mm. And also for a very, very long time was a political writer, then for a very, very long time was a very senior, you know, journalist. So also uh, I got inspiration from my cousin, mm -hmm. you know, uh, who retired, working for a very long time at, uh, you know, Nation Media Group. So uh, that is where I would say I got inspiration also as well. Mm. So when you applied for this course, you were called for it? Yes. You apply for, you apply to do journalism. No, I, 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 husband. You see, after I finished from form, mm. I could not go to campus because we are six in our families. I have three elder mm. siblings. So what happened is my sister had to learn first at the mm. UN. My two brothers also had to follow. So what happened, I was waiting. So I decided, no, let me go and hustle. So after Form 4, when we finished the last paper on Friday, mm. on Monday, I was in town, a cleaner at a restaurant. I worked in that restaurant for one year first as a, as a cleaner. Then I was promoted to a waiter. Mm. I worked for that restaurant here at the Railways Museum, it used to be called Hippo Point. Yeah. And Babu Moses Oginde gave me an opportunity to work there. And they let Mama Yuanita Oginde, mm. may hustle rest in peace. They gave me an opportunity to hustle in this town. And so from, I, was grad I graduated from a waiter mm. to a cashier. At, at Hippo Point. At Hippo Point. Mm. And my salary increased. Mm from 4,000 to 6,500. And you know I used to save. Yes. I saved for two and a half years. Mm. By the time when January 2007 clocked, I said it is my time to go to Daystar University and pursue journalism. And so I went and paid that money. Mm. And I paid the application fee. And I did also the medical, te uh, medical tests and everything with a little saving. When that calling letter came, then I left Hippo Point and I said, thank you so much, my employers. Mm. I'm now going to pursue my dream career. <laughs> oh, <laughs> In general, I met a cleaner. Why, what on a kuja on a kula, ugali is na anguka, so on a kapo kandu, kisa anguka, on a kuja on a fagia, and la follow and gine wako kuja waka. So uh, that is how, and then you, now you also clean the compound at Hippo Point yeah. restaurant. Two wow. and a half years. Two and a half years? Yes. Four thousand? Four thousand shillings. And I, st I started, my last paper was on Friday. Yeah. I traveled to Nairobi from Siaya Badling Secondary School. Mm. On Monday, mm. I started working. Ukopale, we have a new cleaner. Yes, we have a new cleaner. Uh, yes, with the trouser ya shule, because we have trouser ya moja. I just had a trouser ya green ya shule, yes. viatu ya shule, mm. na PE shirt mm. ya green. That is how I went to that old job. And I live in for three days, Kifatana. The boss later on, Alin Letia Ngozake. Because the bosses, we were church mates. Um, yeah? Mm. So later on, Alin Letia, some clads. Mm. And I thank Babu Moses Ogende for that. So that is how we started our hustle. Three days, what I done is in Gonizaba. The first week, I walked to and fro railways. You know, it was at the Railways Museum, mm. near Railways Museum, mm. near the Took. Technical University of Kenya, mm. just behind it. Mm. So I used to leave Kibera at 5.30. Mm. 
Natoka kibenda 5.30 na kuja all the way to town. Na ingitoka 6.30 na tembea. Then luckily it train commuter ikaanza so you pay 20 bob mm. na chukisho pale kibenda na ingia mutani. You are among the few people who have a job. Yes. I'm employed. You are employed. Without a care pin. What an inspirational story. What an inspirational story, Kakaza Tolale. And uh, it speaks to the determination that people have out here. Or just, it also speaks to the fact that uh, we are not what people just think we are. Mm. There is a lot more to our names than, than what, what, what people hear or see. Because every person who has sat on this uh, on this seat has told me a very unique story about their life shortly before mm, and after and after, yeah. and after joining the the media. So let me go back to the media a little bit as we wind up that uh, this particular uh, segment. Mm. But before I do that. So later on, you have joined Daystar University. You've left Daystar, nation, and uh, citizen, and all that. Looking back over those years, 1997 Olympics, uh, <laughs> break. <laughs> Talk about break, school break. <laughs> school break. <laughs> yes, break. Going to 2007, Pali, mm. Mm. Uh, later on into uh, becoming a family man. Yeah. Uh, looking back all these years, what would you say has been your lowest moment? My lowest moment, uh, I've had two tragedies. Um, tragedies that uh, cost lives. Um, the first I was when I was with a small baby um, who drowned in Mombasa yeah. we had gone with my daughter and uh, the then sister-in-law uh, age of my daughter about six years seven years so when we went for that holiday and uh, she accidentally drowned. That was the first lowest moment. Because uh, in the midst of all that, you know, uh, getting a baby, trying to save her, uh, I, I, you find just, I find myself in hospital in, you know, ambulance, first aid, nothing is happening. You're in the ambulance, you're with a shot, Mgotupu, bare chested, only a shirt that is wet. You're in this ambulance. You feel the world is going down. Mm. You're trying to save her. Mm. All in vain. Africa hospital, emergency, nothing. Mm. You ultimately lose her. And you still carry her to them mug in the dead of the night at 1 a.m. Mm. You're in the mortuary barefooted with a shirt without a shirt. Mm. <laughs> you in my lady, ah, lost a very sad tragedy. And uh, when um, years later, I also lost my son to pneumonia, mm. a twin brother. And so Those were the two, being in uh, ICU for a week, and more than a week. All that time you are not eating. All that time you are not. You cannot do anything. You also get sick in it. I would say those have been my lowest. Mm. Or I know the other challenges that have come in life, but. Those ones really crushed me. Mm. Yeah. Those 
those were really down moments. And those were down moments, yeah. Mm, those were really, really down moments. Mm. And uh, essentially, everybody then would uh, naturally, not even everybody, naturally, life would expect you to soldier on. Yeah. To move forward. And I really thank, you know, um, the people mm. who worked with me, colleagues, came in in a major way, amazing way. Both tragedies, the kind of support I saw from my colleagues, friends, neighbors, overwhelming, mm. overwhelming. The people worked with me, and that is why I learned what love is, mm. yeah? And that is why I learned also the importance of social capital, mm. you know, invest in people, invest in friendship, create time, sacrifice, you know, to interact with people. So um, I also got tremendous, tremendous support mm. from all those incidences, yeah. So, yep. Mm. Mm. So, John, you, you still, because, you know, um, mourning takes time, grieving takes time. Mm. To date, I still grieve. To date, to date, yeah. So, but still you have to work, you have to live your life, mm. you know, you have to be strong for the people around you. Mm. So, uh, just pick your pieces mm. and try and move on, but it does not mean you have your lowest moments. You still have, sometimes you just, you're in a car, you're driving and then, you know, you just break down, you mm. just pack a candle. You have your moment to just break down in tears. Mm. You wait, Namaliza. You call someone, mm. telling them I just remembered mm. this person. Mm. And you know they stand with you. They gentle. They say, "Said, let's say a prayer." Said, "Take heart." Then you just be there for like ten more minutes, and then you drive off. Yeah, it's quite a. It's it's mm. quite something. Yeah. It never really goes away. It, go, it never goes away. Mm. Mm. It only changes how it manifests. It was of mind and all that. Yes. I see. How far apart were the two tragedies? Mm, one was in um, 2016 and uh, now 2021. So about five years. Quite a short period. Yeah, very, very short period. And all involving minors. Yeah, mm. so... Very finally, what would you say is the future of journalism in this country? Where do you see yourself in the next six, seven years? I think uh, this country has provided a very good platform. Mm. The, the, the existing law. Mm. Um, we know the issues about uh, freedom of the press, mm. press freedom. Mm. We know the issues about interference, mm. but um, we on course, I would say there is some hope, mm. you know. Um, we've had unfortunate events in the country in terms of the security of, of journalists. Mm. We've had cases of abductions and disappearance. We've had cases of murders mm. by, you know, media practitioners. Mm. And uh, we've had also um, journalists being battered, being attacked, you know. You saw during the, the, the demonstrations what happened to a section of uh, the media uh, personnel. So if you compare to, you know, around, when you look around and you compare, you would see that, you know, um, we have step ahead. And uh, there is there is uh, some hope mm. and opportunity mm. for us also to take, you know, the media to another level. Mm. One could maybe ask: Is the future of investigative uh, journalism? Mm. Yeah, um, I think from how <laughs> you know mm. viewers. And I'm talking about to uh, this, this this current generation of crop of you know journalists and mm. uh, when you look at maybe 
how we grew up watching and following investigative pieces and uh, where we are now mm -hmm. you know you could you could clearly see you know the uh, according to me i know it's still ongoing mm -hmm. but maybe when you look at the mainstream where people and i, I and i appreciate mm -hmm. all investigative journalists what we are doing and what they do uh, but you know is it safe anymore yeah is it secured anymore and even those who are doing it aggressively why did they back down you know you know mm -hmm. um, when these issues are addressed i believe they would you know give a platform for brano boya to go back mm -hmm. to investigative journalism mm -hmm. you know and uh, because the only thing is the platform the only thing that investigative journalists ask for is the security mm -hmm. for themselves, for the whistleblowers. Mm -hmm. And you know, these are entities and these are personalities that are supposed to be protected mm -hmm. because of what they highlight mm -hmm. you know, in the society. So mm -hmm. I think there's still work to be done mm -hmm. in journalism. And uh, basically, I think um, the media in Kenya uh, we still have work clearly cut out. Mm. The only thing that gives us hope and propels us is that we are a trusted body. Mm. When you look at those polls, when it comes to institutional trust, mm. uh, the media is usually up there. Why? Because we are deemed to be people's observers, mm. people's eyes. Mm. And so it is our, uh, very important for us to uphold this integrity and uh, to do what the calling is. Mm. Thank About. you. Yeah. Thank you, Seth Olale, senior reporter, Citizen TV, formerly at NTV, and made an attempt at Hope FM. <laughs> that never, that never really got to be quite a man, quite mm. a story, and uh, he has found time to be with us here on Inside the Newsroom. I'm glad you could also stay with us and watch this yet another episode of Inside the Newsroom that is proudly brought to you by Bet Kumi. Bet Kumi, Chachisha Bet. And always remember to bet responsibly. I'm Brano Boya. See you again next week.